before we read the gospel, somebody just go back into the booth and uh, see that uh, everything is being recorded as, uh, as need be. There are a few people that aren't here, so I'm assuming that maybe some people might watch our telecast on, on television. Our uh, Holy Gospel this morning is from St. Matthew, the 15th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let's bow our heads and pray together, shall we? Lord, you've called us together this morning to experience the rich blessing of the fellowship of believers. To grow closer to you through the act of worship. And I pray that you will give me not only words to speak this morning, but your word of life to share with others. I pray that all who are gathered here might feel quickened by your spirit. And I ask especially that if there is anyone here this morning that has come to this place of desperation, if any are here in this place that are hurting, or are in sorrow, or longing, or hungry for life, that that person might know that you are present in his or her life today, and that you are ready to fill whatever is empty. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, when you're having a meal together, one of uh, the discussions that inevitably happens at the, the table is, uh, what are you going to do with the leftovers? What are you going to do with the leftovers on uh, your plate? What are you going to do with the leftovers that are still in the bowls that haven't even been served up yet? So that's the question, what, what do we do with leftovers? Now I grew up in a family with three uh, teenage boys. Well, at one time we were all teenagers, not all the time, but at one time we were all teenagers, uh, me including, uh, including me. And so uh, it wasn't uh, often that there were any leftovers, trust me. In fact, if you didn't take your uh, fair share the first time the serving bowl came around, you probably went without, so we knew uh, to fill up our plates, but our parents also taught us, as uh, no doubt your parents probably taught you, is uh, take only what you're going to eat, right? Have you ever heard that before? Take only what you're going to eat, and eat what you take. Eat what you take, yes. So uh, we were always taught to clean our plates. How many of you were taught to clean your plates when you had a meal together? I mean, I can remember times that I was incredibly full, and yet there was still food that left on my plate, and my parents were like, you're going to eat that, and you're going to sit here until it's gone. Well, we're not uh, that focused uh, nowadays, I think, with uh, leftovers, but when things are scarce, uh, then you tend to be a little more conscientious of leftovers and wasting. Now, some studies have been done where it says that the typical American uh, waste throws away 25% of the food and beverages that he or she buys. 25% is thrown away. So the question before us is, you know, 
Now, what do we do with leftovers? What do we do uh, with uh, the scraps at the table? And of course, it's uh, something that we don't always agree on either. And certainly, uh, that question was posed before Jesus in the Gospel lesson this morning, too. I mean, they had those uh, uh, questions about uh, scraps and crumbs, and it also was a divisive topic in Jesus' day. From the story that we just heard, we realize that Jesus is talking about table scraps. He's talking about leftovers, and what do we do with those leftovers? Jesus is walking into the territory of Tyre and Sidon, and he's going into an area that's filled with Gentiles, people who aren't like him, people who have a different history, people who do not worship like Jesus, people who do not have the same God as Jesus does. And I can imagine that after all of Jesus' healing and the, the lessons before this, Jesus is uh, doing his ministry, he is, he's healing all of those uh, ill people that, uh, that are being brought to them, he's teaching uh, of God's word, and he's, and he's tired. And here this Canaanite woman comes to this weary Jesus and to Jesus' weary disciples. A Canaanite, the people who were not part of the faith of Israel, the people who were not to associate with the Israelites, people who were considered bad, people who were considered unclean among Jesus' people. So here this woman comes in the middle of the street and she's crying out, she's wailing desperately, have mercy on me, son of David, help me, my daughter is not well, she is possessed by a, a demon, and yet Jesus doesn't say anything to her, he just keeps going. Perhaps he was looking for a place to rest, he just keeps pressing along, he keeps uh, going forward. He just kind of leaves this woman alone initially. But there she is, still crying out, creating a scene. And, and the disciples become uneasy about this. And, and they tell Jesus, make her go away. Make this woman go away. She doesn't belong here. This woman should not be bothering us at all. And, and this is where we expect Jesus, of all people, to understand where this woman is coming from, to anticipate the scene that it would play out like many of the other miracle stories, that this woman would cry out, the disciples would kind of scoff at that, and then Jesus would just bring about healing, and then we all would learn a valuable lesson. But that's not what happens here in this text. In fact, Jesus here comes off to be a little callous. I don't know if you paid attention to his words. Jesus says, I'm here only to feed the children of Israel. He says to this Canaanite woman, not you, not the Canaanites, I'm only here to take care of the people of Israel. It's not fair to take the children's bread and then feed it to the dogs, he tells this woman. What is Jesus saying here? What is going on here in Jesus' mind? Well, it's hard to know. Theologians have been debating this for centuries, and, and maybe it's that Jesus was just grumpy, right? Maybe he was just tired and grumpy, as we all sometimes get when, when we are tired. And maybe Jesus was testing her in these words. And we could tie ourselves all up in theological knots trying to find the true answer, but maybe we should just encounter uh, this story of Jesus coming to the Canaanite woman as a parable. A parable where our questions are answered with several ways and in several ways. You see, what matters most in the story is not the initial reaction, but it's the action that follows. Jesus says, I shouldn't throw good food to the dogs. I shouldn't waste good food on dogs. And the woman says, yes, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. 
Even the dogs are able to have some leftovers. Even the dogs are able to have some scraps from the master. So it was a brave act on her part, an action that really rattled everyone's assumptions that was there listening to Jesus interact with this Canaanite woman, and perhaps it even rattles our own assumptions about the faith and who is worthy to be healed, who is worthy to be touched by Jesus, who is in and who is out. I wonder, I wonder who is the Canaanite woman today? I wonder who she might be. Who is this Canaanite woman? Perhaps she's one of you. Perhaps you have been just like this Canaanite woman. You might say to yourself, well, I kind of feel like I'm invisible. I kind of feel like I pray and I pray and I pray and, and no one really responds to those prayers. Is Jesus even hearing those prayers that I lift up? We live in a world that is hungry, not just physical hunger, but we live in a world that is hungry spiritually. And people all around us are longing to be fed by things that have meaning and something, substance. And we, we long to be part of something bigger. We long to be given some direction. We long to be loved. And some of us are so desperate that we cry out in the street, Lord, have mercy on me. Just a crumb, just a scrap will be sufficient. For me, Lord. And so if you if you are listening today, if you are that Canaanite woman, if you're the one crying out to seemingly no avail, don't be afraid. Take heart. Don't apologize for your persistence. God hears you. God hears you even in your times of struggle, even in your times of despair. God hears you. And just as God called the woman in this story, just as God called her faith great, just as Jesus said those four little words to her, great is your faith, so God is saying that to you today. Great is your faith in your prayer, and in your persistence. It's no coincidence that after this encounter with the Canaanite woman, the next thing that Jesus does in Matthew's story is to go down to the sea and meet with a crowd of 4,000 hungry and longing people. And he will feed all 4,000 of them from just seven loaves of bread and a couple pieces of fish. You see, God has this amazing ability to bring about change in the most astonishing ways and through the most unexpected people. God's work in our lives is always surprising us, always jarring us, always shaking up our worldview. God makes abundance out of scarcity. God is constantly taking the scraps from our table, the crumbs that we discard, and turning them into a feast, a feast to which we are all invited. So I'm grateful for the Canaanite woman, this unnamed saint, because through her perseverance and through her persistence, through her outspokenness, we catch a glimpse of God's vision of the world. And I'm thankful for you, named saints of God, for your persistence, for your perseverance, and for your prayers that you constantly lift up to God. It's true that God calls our faith great, 
but it's even more true that we call God's faith unto us even greater. Great is God's faithfulness to you and to me always. Amen. Let's sing that hymn together. Great is thy faithfulness. Hymn number 700.